call it what you like, border intrusions, etc., is not because China has suddenly decided that I need to nibble away at more Indian territory. Suddenly, it is a part of a larger game plan that China is pursuing, which is to pressurize India through these border intrusions for different geopolitical reasons. One of them is, of course, that India should not get into the Western camp and try to sort of criticize China. India should not uh, say anything on Hong Kong, what is happening. India should not say anything on Tibet or any other issues or Taiwan that, uh, that bothers uh, China. And where I think China is facing a lot of flack in the international uh, state. I think those are the larger issues. I do not think, and also the fact that because of COVID or the Wuhan virus, as we call it, has put China in the dock in the, at least, you know, in terms of public perception, international public perception, that it was China which, uh, which uh, slipped up or whether, whether by mistake or deliberately and could have done much better in informing the WHO and so many people would not have died because of this uh, fact that China is a authoritarian, non-transparent, etc. So everything requires the clearance of one big boss sitting in Beijing. So I think this, these are some of the issues that China is facing. China is also facing an investigation by the WHO as to how much it was culpable in terms of allowing the Wuhan virus to spread. So all these taken together, then in South China Sea, you know what is happening. Uh, it's trying to create administrative districts as if right. it's part of it's part of China's sort of domestic mm -hmm. uh, infrastructure or domestic uh, sort of administrative uh, structures. Mm -hmm. So all these issues have to be taken together. Yes. The border intrusions cannot be looked at in isolation. Right, but all this all this flies in the face of what was stated. Uh, you know, after after uh, both uh, the leaders, uh, that is President Xi and Prime Minister Modi met in uh, Ch Chennai or uh, Malapuram, uh, if you go into specifics, uh, you know, last year it itself. And, uh, and it's not too much in the past because uh, there it was being talked that uh, 2020 will be a great year for India and China relations, 70 years of diplomatic ties, so many things were in the pipeline to have grand celebrations and further bring India and China together in every possible way. Uh, but General Hasnan, that is also supposed to be happening with our armed forces and there are mechanisms and protocols in place for that. Why do you think these haven't worked in this particular case, in this instance in Eastern Ladakh? See, it is very clear that uh, after Doklam, the Wuhan spirit which was created with the meeting in Wuhan, the decision for informal summits subsequently in Chennai, the Chennai spirit which was subsequently invoked, and it was supposed to be strategic guidance for the armed forces, etc. The pre-Chennai period, or Ch the period up to Chennai, I think was quite different as far as geopolitics of the world was concerned. Uh, I agree with Mr. with Ambassador Penaki that uh, much has changed actually in the world in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, actually, we are still in the middle of it. And much is going to change beyond. China is attempting essentially to take an early lead in taking the initiative to try and run its narratives in the world, in the post-COVID-19 world, to its advantage. So one of those one of those messages and narratives is very clear, which is to India that don't mess, don't get involved with the Americans, don't get involved with the Japanese, don't look at the Quad, don't look at Indo-Pacific, be content with being a part of South Asia, you and I, we, us can have a good relationship. They were worried also about the Indian, uh, the, the ramping up of uh, Indian infrastructure, etc., which has been going on for the better part of many years. But all this somehow comes to a head at a particular moment in geopolitics. And I think China chose to, chose to, to grab that particular moment. And I think that essentially not looking at war fighting in any way is not going to be of any benefit to China. What it is essentially doing is posturing and conveying a strong strategic message to India and through India to the rest of the world. Ambassador Penaki already quoted to you the aspect of Taiwan, Tibet, Hong Kong, South China Sea, relations with Australia, 
different countries around the world, the trade talks with, China, with, the, with the United States. So geopolitics has come into it. A lot of change has taken place in the post-COVID-19 world. And China decided to, uh, decided to use this opportunity to somehow play out its narrative. I suspect that these talks will go on for some time. You okay. cannot expect some kind of a resolution immediately. Dockland took 72 days. This may take even longer. Dockland was curtailed or rather terminated primarily because of two major strategic events which were taking place in the world. One was the BRICS summit and the other was the 19th Congress of the Chinese Communist Party. This time, no such events are coming up. So the whole summer, right up to the winter, is open and the Chinese can continue doing this kind of engagement that they are involved in. Right, but if China is trying to bully India and trying to back into India into a corner because of the way things are, uh, are shaping up uh, within India in terms of how India is rising uh, based on its own strengths and of course uh, in uh, you know, the global context as well, Vinak Ranjit Chakrabarti, uh, isn't this going to be counterproductive for China itself? Because look at uh, what's happening right now uh, because of this COVID situation, uh, companies are... Uh, are uh, considering moving to India from China. Uh, we have a situation where uh, uh, people in India have been talking about, uh, you know, Atmanirbhar Bharat, the PM initiated that. And uh, uh, a lot of things then could really work against China. So doesn't it need to sort of rethink its approach? I think China is not in a mood to rethink. And uh, they are, in fact, issuing further threats. The Global Times has said that if India is goes to the meeting of the G7, as you know, uh, India has been invited to attend, then India would be playing with fire. I mean, these are, uh, you know, in your face kind of threats that, of course, it's coming from global times, but that, that's the mouthpiece of the Communist Party. So China thinks by threatening India and by these border institutions, it's going to get what it wants from India. I do not think that is a very wise policy. It is not perhaps going to work. India is already making moves uh, like uh, signing the logistical agreement with Australia, including Australia in the Malabar exercises, for example. So these are incremental steps on India's part, sending messages to China that if you press us on these other issues, then we have, we have other levers to press too. And I think that is what the messaging is going on at the moment. My own take on the border intrusions, the current one in, uh, in Ladakh, is that it's not going to go away very soon. And these talks will go on and there will be posturing, right. etc. After all, Doklam took what, 73 yes, days? Yes, and when you recall uh, Doklam, uh, you know, as you uh, yourself, I, th I think both of you agree that uh, the situation, the geopolitical situation globally has changed post-COVID-19. Uh, uh, General Hassan, isn't it all the more important now for India to press to resolve this entire boundary question? There have been 22 rounds of uh, special representative talks, uh, but uh, these new need to be concluded all the more important to press on and uh, say that, you know, let's just uh, finish, finish it off not leave room for uh, these, uh, you know, uh, disturbances or whatever misunderstandings to occur time and time and again. General Hasnain? Uh, sorry, could you repeat that question because there was a temporary technical break. Uh, I just I wanted to ask you that doesn't it then become all the more important at this juncture to resolve the boundary issue once and for all. I've been harping on this since 1993. This whole issue of perceptions of the line of actual control are actually, uh, they favor China. Uh, one aspect which is an old narrative and very well understood and has been played out from time to time is the fact that China always wants to keep India pegged to the Himalayas. You know, the continental uh, threats on the Himalayan 4,000 long kilometer long border, that somehow unnerves, or somehow in their perception, Chinese perception, it seems that they think it unnerves India. And that therefore we are always looking for no loss of territory and things like that. While actually uh, the threat to China, the perceived threats of China to China, really lie in the maritime zone in the Indian Ocean. 
through which uh, all its energy resources and all its container traffic flows. Now, this is something that uh, has been considered and thought out by strategic analysts for many, many years now. And we always consider that uh, China will not wish to resolve the LSE or resolve the border issue. Uh, because if it comes to even resolving the LSE and delineating and demarcating an LSE on ground and on map, it will mean that there is a line on which both the armies are halted. It may be eyeball to eyeball or otherwise. But they are there, and then the question of transgressions does not involve, does not evolve. So it's for this reason that China continues to play the issue of the LSE and the border and will not wish to resolve it. I don't think we are looking at a resolution of the border anytime in the future. What would you have to say uh, to that, Pinakran Chakrabarti? Well, I couldn't hear him, but uh, my sense is that to go back to your question as to whether this is a good time to solve the border issue. I don't think China is interested in solving the border issue. It gives them this kind of leverage that you are seeing today. And as far as China is concerned, that unless, unless it has reached a stage where it has become the global hegemon and, has, and can dictate uh, terms to India, it will not solve the sort of border problem. And because it will become so powerful then, by then, supposedly, and India will not be as powerful as China, then India will submit to the terms dictated by China. So I think, and it also gives them the opportunity to create such incidents for leverage on other issues, as I have said, yes. on other geopolitical issues. China has no interest in solving this border problem. It, had, it, it wants to keep the spirit which was created with the meeting in Wuhan the decision for informal summits subsequently in Chennai, the Chennai spirit which was subsequently invoked, and it was supposed to be strategic guidance for the armed forces, etc. The pre-Chennai period, or Ch the period up to Chennai, I think was quite different as far as geopolitics of the world was concerned. Uh, I agree with Mr. with Ambassador Penaki that uh, much has changed actually in the world in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, actually, we are still in the middle of it. And much is going to change beyond. China is attempting essentially to take an early lead in taking the initiative to try and run its narratives in the world, in the post-COVID-19 world, to its advantage. So one of those one of those messages and narratives is very clear, which is to India that don't mess, don't get involved with the Americans, don't get involved with the Japanese, don't look at the Quad, don't look at Indo-Pacific, be content with being a part of South Asia, you and I, we, us, can have a good relationship. They were worried also about the Indian, uh, the, the ramping up of uh, Indian infrastructure, etc., which has been going on for the better part of many years. But all this somehow comes to a head at a particular moment in geopolitics. And I think China chose to, chose to, to grab that particular moment. And I think that essentially not looking at war fighting in any way it's not going to be of any benefit to China. What it is essentially doing is posturing and conveying a strong strategic message to India and through India to the rest of the world. Ambassador Penaki already quoted to you the aspect of Taiwan, Tibet, Hong Kong, South China Sea, relations with Australia, different countries around the world, the trade talks with, China, with, the, with the United States. So geopolitics has come into it. A lot of change has taken place in the post-COVID-19 world. And China decided to, uh, decided to use this opportunity to somehow play out its narrative. I suspect that these talks will go on for some time. You okay. cannot expect some kind of a resolution immediately. Dockland took 72 days. This may take even longer. Dockland was... Curtailed or other